There's been a lot of talk about the transition to the low carbon economy and one of the key elements according to many is the transition to electric vehicles and we're fortunate today to have Lex Forsyth from Genus Electric. Lex thanks for joining us. Yeah thanks for having us Ross, thanks for coming along. Lex what is Genus and what are you about? Genus Electric is a, we're, we're converting diesel trucks to electric um, with an exchangeable battery technology that we've developed here on, on the central coast. Uh, we've also developed a, a conversion module which basically slips into the truck where the diesel engine is. Can a battery truly power a big heavy vehicle like the one behind you? Yeah, it, it can. So that truck there is a 97 tonne rated prime mover. It will, it will go into B-double and road train applications. What sort of mileage can something like this uh, get with, with Yeah, so with an exchangeable battery, uh, about 360 kilometres towing a, trip, a triple road train. Um, towing a single trailer or a B-double, so more like what the Western Star is behind us, in, in that range between four to 600. It all depends on the weight of the load and, and, uh, and the topography that the vehicle's operating in, but the key point is that the battery's exchangeable, so you're not stopping to plug it in charge for six or eight hours. You pull up and you can pull the battery in and out in four minutes and the truck's on its way again. So what, what, what have we got here, Lex? Yeah, so that's our Genus conversion module. So what you can see here is we've got some variable speed drives that control the auxiliary system, so power steering, air compressor, water pump. Um, we obviously got to have a coolant pump there to keep the, the electric motor cool um, and the inverter cool. This is a DD15 uh, Detroit diesel engine was in this truck. This truck's a 2012 model, uh, Western Star. It's done about 1.3 million kilometres. So we took the motor out and we dropped our conversion module directly into it and then we install um, a, a side receptacle on the truck. They just simply go in and out with a forklift to pick the battery up and it slides straight in and out of the rack and there's a hot swap. So the whole thing just... The whole battery out. comes out. So it's, a, it's about two tonne of battery there and steps are integrated into it, um, part of its side, side impact protection as well too. Just turn the key around, that, that's it. You don't need to turn it away because it's not starting. That's oh, okay. it, started. So you've just started an electric truck, that's it, that's I, it on. But I can't hear it. No. <laughs> so you'll see the screen light up here and that basically is the interface for the driver to be able to see what's going on. Yeah, their road speed, what gear they're in, um, the current amperage running through the batteries, the current voltage of the batteries. That noise you can hear is the air compressor. Yeah. That's the most noise this vehicle makes. Uh, there looks like a lot more dials than a regular dashboard here. Everything that you see there was what the truck came with. Right. This is all you need for electric. Okay. Now you're something of a rare species, which is a homegrown Australian manufacturer. Tell us a little bit about the technology that's involved here. What type of batteries are they and, and how big a challenge is it to fit a battery to a vehicle like this? Look, the, the batteries, so our batteries are made up of 1,080 uh, lithium ion cells. So they're a, a lithium NMC chemistry, which gives us the energy density to give us the range. So in e each side pack or each side battery has 540 of these lithium ion cells in there in series. Um, we then lay them in, in layers and they're in three, there's three, um, three packs per, per side module. So once the batteries are all cabled together, we then take them and they, get, they drop into a stainless steel tray. So then we have a la what we call a layer six. So this is the five layers. That, that, that all feeds through into a control layer on top. And then you can see the starting the process of constructing layer six for this battery here. Connectors go in, quick connectors, battery management system goes in the top and away it goes. And then if you look around on the back of the truck, you can see, um, basically you see the cabling that comes in, goes into, a, in, into, a, into a, a circuit box that basically feeds onto the batteries and connects the, the, bat, the, the energy in the batteries to the truck. Let's talk about the charging stations. So is the aspiration to have a series of stations across the uh, Eastern Australia? We've got actually got uh, every state in Australia now wanting charge and change stations in certain locations. Like we've got an operation in the Tanami Desert at a gold mine where they're looking at potentially having trucks just going in a loop using electrification to decarbonise that haul route. Um, we've got South Australia, Port Augusta and Mount Gambia. Um, we're looking between Brisbane and Sydney in, in key locations like Taree and Ballina and then obviously Brisbane and Sydney. Uh, but it, it's, it's about putting them where trucks are stopping and you know every truck's got to stop every five hours for a fatigue break, particularly on long distance, for the driver to have his rest break. So if you put the charge station where it makes sense, where the driver stops for his rest break, they can, while, they're getting, while they're having a coffee and having a break, the battery can be easily exchanged and the truck's on its way again. What would it cost someone to retrofit a battery uh, to their truck? Yeah, so to do the conversion, you're looking at $150,000 to convert the diesel to an electric drivetrain. It's a big investment. What sort of payback period would they expect to see and how does it compare to things like hydrogen 
or, or the diesel motor for that matter. So when you look at the energy content of a, an electric vehicle with the current energy prices, uh, you're looking at around sort of 35 to 40 cents a kilometre. With the current diesel prices, you're about a dollar five a kilometre. And from what we've seen from hydrogen and what they're quoting with hydrogen numbers, uh, you're looking at about a dollar 18 to a dollar 20 a kilometre to operate a vehicle in a B double application. Maintenance costs are normally about 60 to 70 percent cheaper than a diesel vehicle because there's no servicing on an electric motor. There's no filters, there's no fuel filters, no air cleaners, no nothing. So that's the big efficiency for a fleet operator. Payback varies on obviously duty cycles of the truck, but in a typical long distance vehicle, you're looking at about a 12 month payback on the conversion cost. In the recent elections, there was a lot of talk about repowering Australia and supporting the transition to low carbon, particularly around things like hydrogen. What sort of support are you getting from government at different levels? We, we haven't been getting any support from government. That's the really disappointing thing. Like the way we look at it is hydrogen's been getting too much oxygen. Um, they think hydrogen's the silver bullet, and the biggest problem is is that we can't, uh, you know, they've they've gone, they've put all their eggs in one basket rather than looking at, we need to have a, a balanced approach to this. We need to look at what we're doing with it on a greater level. And Alex, why do you think it is that the government is focused on hydrogen, and how does it compare? How do the technologies between lithium battery and hydrogen compare? When you, whenever you convert energy, you lose that, you lose some of it. Um, so when you look at that through a hydrogen fuel cell that create, turns it back into electricity, it then puts it through an electric motor or a battery on the truck to power the, to power the truck. You're looking at about 29 to 30% of that energy actually getting to the drive wheels. When you go to a battery electric, you're looking at around 80 to 85% of that original energy that you start with going to the drive wheels of the truck. So just on a pure efficiency, efficient use of energy, Electricity, you know, battery electric is the is the superior way to go. Is it conceivable that Australia can actually manufacture the battery itself? Yes. So we have a partnership with a, a, a battery manufacturer here in Australia, Lis Energy. Uh, they've developed a lithium sulphur chemistry, which is uh, it improves our energy density by three times. Uh, they're looking at opening uh, manufacturing in Geelong, in Victoria and uh, we've got an off-take agreement with them and an agreement to take a certain number of cells and it's key for us to look at how can we bolster more manufacturing and more engineering and those services here in, in, in Australia. What exactly will those growth aspirations mean for the next 12 months? What are the next steps for you? So the next steps are obviously opening up between Brisbane and Sydney to prove out that first thousand kilometres. We've also got um, uh, South Australia that's opening up in Port Augusta and Mount Gambier with two major fleets in, in that part of the world where you know, we'll be trialling our battery technology in some of the harshest conditions in the cube truck right behind you here. Um, and then also uh, we're looking at other back to base operations that you know, there's a lot of um, concrete um, aggregate coming in from Maroolan and those sorts of things to the south of Sydney, coming into Western Sydney there. Um, and that will be a key proving ground for this technology as well too. But it's also moving into a larger premises, scaling up manufacturing, employing more people and, and helping grow the business over, a, um, over, over the next 12 to 12 months to two years. I can hear the passion in your voice, Lex, when you talk about this. What drew you into this? Tell us a, bit, a little bit about your background and how you got into this. Yeah, so I come from a transport background. I come from a transport family. My, my, my family's been involved in transport for the last 40 odd years here in Australia. What I look at it is, is it's about leaving a legacy for our industry in, in the sense of how do we bring um, some efficiencies both environmentally and economically back into transport businesses and because of the cost of energy now and, and our reliance on imported diesel into this country, we have no energy security, no energy sovereignty in this country. We're at, we're at a whim to what overseas markets do. There needs to be a balanced approach to how we change our energy markets here in Australia. We've got to have a balanced approach to going to renewables. We need to have a plan, we need to document the plan and we need to stick to it. Lex, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today and we wish you all the best with your growth plans. Thanks very much for having us, Ross.